Hello, uh, this is Math Reasoning for April 14th. Um, last week, uh, we learned about a lot of different logical connectives and how you put together uh, mathematical statements to make more complex mathematical statements. Um, what we've talked about so far is not quite enough to be able to express the type of uh, uh, relationships we want to talk about. We want to be able to have statements that has variables in it. So uh, in this video, we'll talk about quantifiers. There's, there's two types of quantifiers, universal quantifiers uh, and existential quantifiers, and uh, we'll, we'll go through it. Um, let's jump into the notes. Okay. <clears throat> So we want to be able to deal with uh, statements involving variables. Uh, for example, consider a statement like uh, this p of x right here. Um, if p of x is a statement where x is greater than 3, uh, the truth value of that statement depends on the actual value of x, right? So x greater than 3, that's a statement uh, that does not have a truth value yet, like uh, true or false. It, it just depends on x. Um, like a function, uh, we are able to plug in uh, element into this uh, statement. Um, the, the values of x we can consider is uh, sometimes called domain or universe of discourse or sometimes called the universe of discussion as well. Uh, if it's carefully stated, uh, it will be said. Some, sometimes you have to be able to figure out from context uh, what, it, what it means, um, what, what variables you can plug in. Okay. So when you have uh, statements like this, where it depends on a variable, these are called propositional forms. So it looks like a proposition statements, like a true or false statements, but it really depends on what you plug in. So there are three different ways to make this a true or false statement. Uh, the first way is to state what you plug in. So uh, if you plug in x equals to seven, for example, for the previous statement, the statement turns into seven is greater than three, which is obviously a true statement here. So uh, you could just pick an element from the domain and then just make it a specific, more specific uh, statement. That's one way to make it into a true or false statements. Uh, the other two ways are using quantifiers. So let me first talk about universal quantifier. So we say, uh, so let d be the domain, then we can write down the upside down A, capital A, X belongs to D, P of X. When you write this down, you read it as for all X and D, P of X. And basically this means that this statement is only true if every single element in the domain D will make the statement P of X true. So it doesn't matter what you plug in, all of it makes P of X true. So um, that's what universal means. All, all of it will make it true. And um, here's a kind of fine print at the bottom. If you have a domain which is an empty set. So if, if there's nothing that you're plugging it in, you still count it as true when you say for all x in D, P of x. Uh, this is to make all the other logical calculus work out. Um, but you, you do have to know this detail. So it, it's called vacuous truth. So if if there's no cats in this room, then you can say all of the cats in this room have 
seven legs and it'll be a true statement. Okay, another type of quantifier is called existential quantifier. So how we write this one is that you write mirror image of capital E. So it kind of looks like a blocky, blocky three uh, and you read it as there exists. Uh, so there exists X and D P of X. So that's how you read the symbols above. Um, and this statement becomes true if you can find at least one example uh, in the domain where this P of X becomes a true statement. So you just have to find one example or you just have to show that there, there's at least one uh, that qualifies. And that just finding one will make this whole uh, statement true. And um, as before, uh, there's a fine print here. So if in this case, uh, the domain is an empty set, then the statement is automatically false. Um, so um, the default truth value is different for universal and existential. So if it's universal, the default is true. Uh, until proven otherwise. Um, and then the default for existential quantifier is that it, it's false until you can show that at least one is uh, satisfies that statement. Okay. All right, so that's the universal and existential quantifier. And um, you could have more than one quantifier if there's more than one variable. Um, and the order in which you write down the quantifiers actually matter. Um, so it is our convention that every quantifier following can depend on the choice before it. Um, so uh, look at the following two statements. For all real number x, there exists a y, which is a natural number, such that y is greater than x squared. So when you read this from left to right, um, you have to consider every possible x, uh, because there's a universal quantifier here. Um, but once you choose your x, your choice of y could depend on that x. So um, your y could depend on whichever choice of x you chose. Um, so yeah, you could always pick a number that's greater than the square of any real number. That's, that's true. You could always uh, kind of round, round up to the next uh, natural number and um, you have something that's bigger. So this is a true statement. Um, but if you flip the order of quantifiers, um, when you write there exists a natural number such that for all real number x, y is greater than x squared, this is false. Um, because, uh, because of the existential quantifier here appears before x, that means your choice of y here is fixed um, while you uh, change all the x, right? So you can't have a natural number that's greater than any, any real number squared um, because there's always bigger real numbers uh, if you fix a natural number. Uh, so this is a false statement. It looks very similar. The only difference of these two statements is where the existential quantifier uh, is located. Is it before or after uh, the x in the real number is chosen? So, um, that's, that's something that we have to be uh, keenly aware of. Um, okay, so I want you to practice this concept. All right, so now um, I want you to uh, possibly pause this video uh, and work out um, the truth value of the following six statements. So uh, assume all the domain here, I haven't written it um, down here. 
but consider all of these natural numbers, one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay. So here's, um, here's six statements. If they're all x is less than y, um, but order in which I give um, the natural number, sorry, uh, the universal and existential quantifiers is different. So pause this video and see if you can uh, work out um, if you think uh, each of these statements is true or false. Um, and then unpause this video to see if, if you're right, because uh, I'll, I'll go over it in a second. So try it out. Okay, I will, I'm gonna walk through all six of these statements. So, so I'll try to see if you got the same thing or not. If you didn't get it right, um, uh, try to uh, follow the arguments and see if you can um, convince yourself that that's true, or um, uh, you might have to you might have to think about it a little bit further. Sorry, I don't know why that flipped. Oh. Okay. So here, uh, no matter what um, natural number was chosen here for any x, there's a natural number that's bigger than that. So that's, that's definitely a true statement. You can do that. Um, is there a natural number that's greater than all other natural numbers? That is no. Uh, is there a natural number that's smaller than all other natural numbers? And that's, that's false. This is almost true. Um, if you choose x to be the smallest natural number one, um, then that's less than or equal to all other natural numbers. Uh, but this is a strict inequality here. Um, so it's, it's false. Um, one is not less than one itself. So. Uh, this is a false statement just because uh, this is a strict less than symbol. Uh, for the next one, for all y, there exists an x that's less than y. Um, that is also false. And this is almost always true, uh, except when y is equal to one, there is no smaller natural number. So this, this is a, so it does not exist. Um, this is a false statement. Uh, is there an X and Y? That's natural number such that X is less than Y. This is definitely true. Um, All natural number x and y, x is less than y. This is definitely false. There are some combination where this is not true. So I hope that that made sense. Um, if, if that didn't make sense, uh, try to rewind it and see if you can convince yourself why the order is saying what it's saying. Okay, uh, but let's move on. So one of the advantages of being able to write these quantifiers and symbols is that you can express this general rule. Um, and one of these general rule is that about negational quantifiers. So if you say, if it's not the case that fall x, p of x is true, the opposite of that statement is the same thing as there exists an x such that p of x is not true. Okay, so notice how uh, the quantifier flipped um, here. Here there's a universal quantifier with negation symbol in the outside. So the opposite of universal is same thing as existential of the negation of the inside. Um, the, the negation symbol flips the, the existential quantifier 
into a universal as well. So if it's not the case that there exists an X where P of X is true, then that is equivalent to saying for all X, P of X is not true. So slipping in negation symbol across a quantifier flips the quantifier to the other type. Um, which is a which is a good thing to know, and um, you could you could have multiple quantifiers. So you can kind of slip it past a few different quantifiers, and uh, the order of the quantifier doesn't change, but the type will each flip. Um, so let's let's look at a practical application of this. Okay, so in chapter one, uh, we discuss the definition for function being bounded. Um, so if you rewrite the definition of the, the function being bounded using quantifiers, uh, this is the statement we get. Okay. So there exists a real number m such that for all x in the domain, the absolute value of the output is less than or equal to that bound m. So this is what it means to be uh, bounded. Uh, notice the quant existential quantifier comes before uh, you choose the x in the domain. So um, this, uh, this m cannot depend on the domain. It has to be a number that's larger for every input in the domain. Okay, so if I want to say this is not true, uh, the opposite of being bounded, um, you could push the, the not symbol inside. So the existential quantifier becomes universal and the universal quantifier becomes existential. You could say if it's not bounded, then for any real number, there's at least one X in the domain such that uh, the absolute value of the output is strictly greater than uh, the bound M. So notice how uh, the less than or equal to symbol turns into greater than symbol because of the trichotomy uh, axiom. That's the, that's the opposite of being less than or equal to is greater than. So uh, this statement is equivalent to the not uh, of above statement. I hope that made sense. Um, all right, I'll see you in another video about writing conventions.